freaky eater is someone who takes an eating habit to the extreme. 29-year-old Amber lives on a diet of french fries. I like the way they make me feel. Every meal of every day for the past 26 years. If I didn't allow her to only eat french fries, Amber would not eat. And her seven-year-old daughter is following in her footsteps. These are really good. It's not an easy thing to live with, and I don't want to see that happen to my daughter. In just one week, can specialist Mike Dow and JJ Virgin free Amber and her daughter from their disastrous diet? <laughs> or will the change push Amber over the edge? I can't do it. Amber's a tough case because Amber is only going to do what Amber wants to do. I want to get the hell out of here. My name is Amber, and I am definitely a freaky eater. 29-year-old Amber only eats french fries. Devouring in excess of 125 pounds of deep fried french fries each and every month. Yearly, that's the equivalent of 6,000 potatoes. 115 potatoes every single week. Amber eats french fries, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But Amber cannot eat just any french fries. Smell, color, and texture are also important. A lot of the times fries will have a burnt end like this. That is definitely something that I cannot eat. So I will take that and pinch it off and stick it underneath the napkin and then eat the rest of the fry. I will feel even a little euphoric after eating fries. I'm not sure what it is about them that makes them so good, but <laughs> I like the way they make me feel. Amber Scott grew up in the small rural community of Ennin, Ohio, the youngest of three children who, at first, had no problems with food. She was great with baby food, but between the age of three and four, she stopped eating everything other than french fries. I remember being a normal eater, and then overnight, it just stopped. Amber's problem quickly progressed, and she began gagging on every new food. She would say, the smell was awful. If she tasted it, she'd spit it out, or she would actually vomit. If I didn't allow her to only eat french fries, Amber would not eat. Concerned, Amber's mother sought advice from doctors, who told her Amber would grow out of her picky eating. So she continued cooking Amber fries every meal of every day. This has been Amber's diet for the past 26 years. Now, Amber has a seven-year-old daughter of her own. McCartney's a picky eater, as well as her mom. While McCartney will also eat pizza and some fast food, she has recently started refusing more and more foods, the same way Amber did when she was three. McCartney treats foods a lot like how I treat them. She will gag at times. I don't like to try new food because it's going to be like stinky or kind of gross. Amber is absolutely convinced that both she and her daughter have a genetic condition that makes new tastes unbearable. These are really good. They came out perfect. I want to teach her that if there's something different about yourself and you're not like everyone, that it's okay to be who you are. She has tried researching their condition, but she's only found a few other people who share her habits, and no one has been able to find a diagnosis. I've tried therapists, I've tried doctors, they don't understand. I've tried everything that I know, but I don't know how to change it. While Amber has not yet suffered any health problems from her diet, she knows all too well the mental anguish that comes with not fitting in. I've been chastised, I've lost friends. They'll say stuff like, you know, I can eat anything, and it's like, well, that's great, you know, good for you, but I can't. Feeling like an outcast, Amber avoids many social events for fear of being judged for a problem she can't explain. I don't want to have to answer someone's questions every day. And people get upset because they think, well, then you must be doing this out of choice. And it's like, I would never do this out of choice. Amber does not believe either she or her daughter can change, but she is desperate to understand her condition. I want to know why I'm like this. I want to find out. Looking for answers, Amber's called in freaky eater specialists Dr. Mike Dow and JJ Virgin for help. Hi 
With one week of intense therapy, they'll attempt to free her from the agony of her restricted diet. I'm a psychotherapist specializing in addictive behaviors and eating disorders. Amber. JJ Virgin. Hi, Amber. I'm a board certified nutrition specialist. Why do you think that you're only reaching for those french fries? I feel that there is something beyond oh, I don't want to eat that. I mean, that's definitely not it, because yeah. I do want to eat it. And there are foods that I have sat down and have tried. What happens? I, I throw it up. OK, so I'm hearing you do want to try to eat healthy. Yes, I've tried. But you can't. I can't. I definitely am leaning more towards the fact that it's, it's medical, because I know that I'm, what I'm doing is not a choice. I mean, even just one new food can open up a whole lot of options for me, even one. Good. Amber contacted Dr. Dow and I for help because she really wants to understand her problem. I'm sending Amber to the lab to run some genetic tests because she needs to find out once and for all if something's going on with her. Coming up, will Amber finally find the answer she's been searching for? When the geneticists looked at yours, they called me because it's extremely rare. Wow. Amber believes she can only eat french fries because of a genetic condition that makes her gag on other foods. To determine if that is the case, nutritionist JJ Virgin had Amber and her daughter submit DNA samples to a genetic lab. Now the results are in. We're trying to find out if Amber has sensitive tastes, because if she does, it could make her a picky eater. I know that you've been waiting a long time to learn all of this stuff, okay? Based on their genes, the lab categorizes people into two main groups, either tasters or non-tasters. 95% or more of the population falls into one of those categories. You know, we talk to those people, they're very sensitive to taste. They'll be the picky eaters, right, trying to find something that they like. The non-tasters will have a tendency to overeat because everything tastes good to them. When the geneticists looked at yours, they called me because they'd never seen anything like it. <laughs> Wow. Never. It's extremely rare. <laughs> so there's 55 different taste variations here. Yours follow no pattern at all. Your results were inconclusive, so it completely explains what you've been saying. Unbelievable. For the majority of my life, I've been shouting that this is not my fault, that there's something going on with me, and nobody wanted to hear that. And finally, it's a relief. What I want you to know now is it validates you, but it also doesn't validate this behavior. Your genetics will shape your behavior, but they aren't forcing it. You still ultimately have a choice. Amber's results mean that she will always have trouble adapting to a new taste, but it's not impossible. We aren't going to really know what she's going to like until she tries it, but what we do know is if she doesn't hate it, then that's a food that she can incorporate into her diet. The good news with your daughter is that she's a non-taster. That's good. Amber's daughter did not have that highly sensitive taste reaction. In fact, Amber's daughter is a non-taster, which would mean that her daughter should really like a wide variety of foods. Maybe you can have her help you. <laughs> McCartney's just a normal seven-year-old child who doesn't want to try her vegetables. And now I know that that's what I'm dealing with versus having a serious medical issue. So here's everything about you and everything about your daughter. And clearly, we have some work to do. <laughs> now Dr. Dow wants to tackle the other side of Amber's disorder, the fear she feels when faced with a new food. If it started with a physical genetic piece, that emotional pieces of this disorder either can help it or make it worse. So we do have this strictly genetic and physical mixed with the emotional part of a disorder. Amber has learned this aversion towards choices because she does have this physical response and also a psychological one, the anxiety, the, the beating of the heart, the sweaty palms when she is approached with trying a new food. The treatment for your condition is graded exposure therapy. We are going to break down step by step by step, the things that you want to do in your life. So before he has Amber tackle a new taste, Dr. Dow starts even smaller with a familiar food that only looks a little different. Start with tastes and also textures that you already like 
and then we change one thing at a time. This is going to teach your brain that you can't eat this. I am very nervous, and even though french fries are a safe food, changing their color makes me feel uneasy. I would like for you to taste one of the red french fries. I feel like this is not a baby step, and this is not where I would have chosen to start. I guess it's this one. I wanted it over with. I just wanted to be done with the rainbow fries. How are you feeling right now? I'm trying to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Every time you try something new, you are gonna be one step closer to having the life that you want. There was a real yuck face when you put that in your mouth. It wasn't pleasant. But it also wasn't extremely unpleasant. Right. The fact that Amber was able to take a bite, to me, is a success. I just want Amber to have a bite, to have the experience, and to say, did I die? No, and if not, then I'm okay. Building on her progress, Dr. Dow moves on to an even more unnatural color, blue. What are you feeling right now by looking at that blue fry? It looks like a dead blue finger. The average person may say, eating a blue french fry is no big deal. You know, why is she crying over this? But you have to understand that for Amber, emotionally, it's like jumping out of an airplane. <laughs> Here. I want to give you a huge amount of credit for what you just did. I knew that any step that we take is going to provoke some fear in Amber. But the fact that she was able to take this step says that she can indeed make changes to her diet and her life. This was hard for you, and you did it. Coming up, will Amber give up on her treatment? Amber is only gonna do what Amber wants to do. And I can't do it. After a day of intense therapy, Amber has made the first difficult step in treating her psychological fear of new foods. The next evening, Dr. Dow and JJ want to see if she can take an even bigger leap and try a new taste. Amber is used to eating deep fried potatoes every single day. I thought the easiest step for her to make was to stay within the deep fried and then try new tastes in that fashion. JJ orders a variety of different vegetables, ranging from the familiar, like potato, to the unfamiliar, such as carrots, asparagus, and mushrooms. All right, so where do you want to start? Shall we start easy? Um, all right. OK. JJ wanted me to try deep frying the potato. I was apprehensive on so many levels. What does it smell like? It smells like a potato in canola oil. Now, whether it smells like a french fry. But we have something in the ballpark of familiar, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, geez. See, I don't think this is, I don't think this is food. I don't think it's anything, you know? Logically, going to kill you? No, but I mean, eating dirt won't kill me. It doesn't mean it's a good idea. She uses so much all or nothing thinking. She uses a lot of catastrophic thinking. I want Amber to understand that there is some gray area here. Not everything has to be pleasant to her, but it doesn't have to be all bad. But you could eat this and keep it in your mouth, right? Probably. Well, in that case, bon appetit. <laughs> That tasted like sod. Why are you looking at me that way? It did. Amber's a tough case because Amber is only going to do what Amber wants to do. All of us on carrots? Sure. Ready for carrots? To keep moving forward, JJ suggests another mild tasting vegetable, a carrot. Is that right? Is that how it's supposed to look? I've never had a deep fried carrot before. Try so... new things. You tried. You did it. 
And you're okay. So what did you teach yourself today, Amber? I didn't teach myself anything. None of this came as a surprise. You look really angry at us right now. I'm angry because what did you, you know? What do you want me to do right here? I'm I'm trying, but when I you know, I keep, I keep getting pushed a little, pushed a little, pushed a little. I'm pushed to my limit for the day. Then that's all you had to do. Okay. Did you get that you did exactly what you could do and that's all we expected of you? Amber gets really flustered. That tells me that there is such a reaction in Amber with her emotion that a lot of these things aren't going to click for her until maybe tomorrow the day after. Our intention is not to get you mad. It is to help you to move forward. I want to get the hell out of here. I have seriously pushed to my limit for today, guys. And I can't do it. Meltdowns are not a success, but they're also not a failure. I expect a lot of unpleasant emotions, fear, anxiety, worry, when it comes to graded exposure therapy. Let's get you home. After two days of intensive work, Dr. Dow and JJ are leaving Amber to continue on her own. But before they do, they need to see if she is willing to fully commit to treatment. Even though Amber had a meltdown yesterday, we're not giving up on her. We're gonna make sure that we help Amber stay in forward motion. So Amber, yesterday was a tough day. Yeah. What was that like for you? It really showcased how emotional this issue can get. Rather than creating a whole new menu for the week, JJ and Dr. Dow simply want Amber to commit to trying one new food. Is there one that kind of pops up that you'd be willing to give a shot? For a while now, I've been considering a baked potato. Okay, thank you. It's not the outcome that's the important part. It's the willingness to try. Okay. Okay? Tomorrow will be a reevaluation. It's just going to involve me seeing what is the best plan of action. Coming up, on her own, can Amber conquer her fear? I don't like the way this smells. Ugh. Dr. Dow and JJ have left Amber for a few days to carry on with her treatment alone. All I wanted to do with Amber this week was get her to stay in forward motion. And I didn't really care whether she liked a new food or not. I just wanted to make sure that she was willing to try new things. On the first day, Amber is determined to move forward for herself and her daughter, so she decides to try JJ's homework. I had chosen the baked potato because it's very similar to a french fry, and I thought maybe I could do it. I don't like the way this smells. I'm looking at the potato. I'm just trying to remind myself it's the same stuff that french fries are made out of. If I can just take a bite and tolerate it and get used to it, this would really be a very good thing for me. It's slimy. It's not as close to a french fry as I expected it to be. But I think it is something that I can incorporate. I just need to work with it a little more. After her success with the potato, on day three, Amber gets really aggressive and attempts another food she has been considering for the past few months. I have decided to try to make tacos. Ugh. But it's too much, too soon. I really took it into consideration, but at the end, I really couldn't get myself to try it. By day four, Amber is unable to stomach anything new and is back to eating french fries three meals a day. I don't think recovery is going to be easy at all. At least now we know where to focus our efforts. But in terms of trying food, that's going to be difficult for a very, very long time. On day six, Dr. Dow and JJ want Amber to start incorporating her daughter into her treatment. So they've asked them to meet up at a local farm. Hi there. Hi. We came here because we wanted Amber to have an experience with her family, picking some fruits, some vegetables. The more Amber can actually touch and have this experience, the less fearful she will be around food. They hope that McCartney and Amber will be able to encourage each other to try new foods. And they let McCartney lead the way. McCartney spotted the cucumbers. Full heart. All right, <laughs> nice work. Okay, now what's our deal with these foods? What if we don't like it? Spit it out. What if we do like it? Swoon. 
And what if we just think, huh, I'm not sure, what do we do? Try again. Try again. Try again. I don't know that I'm going to be able to tolerate the cucumber. I'm not sure that it's going to work out for me. But I want to be a good role model for my daughter. All right, ready? Did you swallow your cucumber? You, you high five me. As you are you. good. And? I swallowed mine. It tasted like water to me. So is this something that we could incorporate into your diet and you'd be good with that? Um, I like cucumbers. <gasps> I like that. I oh. like that. It's exciting to see Amber motivating McCartney and then in turn McCartney motivating Amber. It was really incredible and I'm excited because I think both of them are going to be able to help each other on this journey. I was proud of my mom for trying new foods. Overall, going from a girl who was crying eating a blue french fry to trying new vegetables in the course of a week? What a huge win. You know, you take a tiny little thing and you see if you like it. You're just checking it out. You're just are seeing if it's going to work for you or not. I'm so excited. I, I feel like this is a new beginning for Amber. Good work today. I'm really excited and optimistic for the future. So let's go celebrate your success. I have a lot of things I can do for myself, for McCartney, and I can't wait to get started.